place a jack stand underneath the car. After we get a little bit more height. to Charlie's house call auto repair I'm Charlie and this right here is the uh, 2007 Nissan Altima that we're going to be replacing the front brakes in today mostly due to this unfortunate rotor wear begin by loosening up all of the lug nuts Jack up the car. Place a jack stand underneath the car. You got your suspension bolts, usually one of the safest places to put your jack stand. Remove all the lug nuts. Set your lug nuts off to the side. Remove the front wheel. Place the wheel underneath the car. Proceed to inspect everything underneath, and right off the bat, we find a broken sway bar link. That's the ball it's supposed to be connected to. That's the end of it, and it doesn't want to move, so it's stuck to the strut. That's that's a potential big problem. I'm going to be advising the customer about that one right away. Check the coil spring. Coil spring looks good. Strut looks good. Brake hoses look good, no cracks. ABS line looks good. I don't like the fact that it's against that, but that's not gonna hurt nothing. Inner and outer CV axle boots. Check out the uh, the bushings. A little bit of cracking in there, but nothing bad. Uh, got this piece right here. It's not in its proper home, so we'll straighten that out. There we go. We'll straighten that out and put some clips in there. And, uh, and we'll start breaking down these brakes. Well, we're on the way back from the auto parts store and after having evaluated the uh, work that needs to be done, we got the spray bar links, we got the brake pads, and we've got the rotors. Turn the wheel that you're working on out towards you. Remove the two caliper bolts. And set them down on a pet trainer so we don't make a mess of the parking lot. No motion there. Let's go grab the C clamp. Take the C clamp, press the C clamp right here, and just over the nut in the back right there for the brake line. And we're going to press this together. Put that over there. 
and we'll put just enough pressure on this to start pushing the brake pad in a little bit you'll see the space right here start to grow I'm gonna take our uh, little brake hook just hook it up here over the spring pull the caliper off and hang it better than that but let's see if I can do this there we go probably come down a little lower there we go and just that way there no chance of dropping the caliper inspect your pins they're a little stiff but they do turn and we'll just pull these out wipe them off put a little fresh grease on them that one's just, there we go put a little fresh grease on them hardware get these brake pads out of here hardware clips that's the bottom one that's the top one there's a difference between them we'll note this for when we get into the hardware kit again this is one of these deals where your squealers and whatnot are all up on the leading edge and we'll get the uh, caliper bracket off and that's a big bolt now I don't have the metric socket that fits this but the 7 8 of an inch does oh wow get that loosened up let's do the top one and I just broke my breaker bar. That's interesting. And we're going to use the double wrench method to get this off because, well, I can't get enough leverage on this to do it. My breaker bar broke. So I got a 21 and a 22 millimeter. Lock the wrench in like this. Pull up on it. And we got it loosened up. Now I can go back to my socket wrench and get the rest of the way out. Now this uh, rotor is really stuck on here. I'm not sure what I'm going to have to do to get that off, but we'll figure it out as we go. There's one 22 millimeter bolt. We'll set that down with the caliper bolts and get this bottom one off. Set that over with the other bolts. And then go ahead and remove your caliper bracket. Set that aside. Have to work on these pins a little bit. And get this very unevenly worn rotor off. Now I've got to figure out how to get this rotor off. I see it doesn't budge. Try the breaker bar, what's left of it. Hitting it, frying it. I don't think this is working. No, that ain't moving. I don't think that's making it move. Alright, let's see what else can we do. The leverage point is the only thing I've got. So we'll try hammer and leverage. leverage pull now for you guys wearing headphones watch out there we go and we got our rotor free set that back there you have to clean this up that's all rusty and 
and let's see what else we got here. A better view of everything. Everything's looking good. So let's get this cleaned up. Clean up the bracket, and then we can start assembling the new parts. Oil and putting that off of this. Take the wire brush to it. One good battery. New battery. A little bit of a difference. scaling. I'm going to chip that off. The easiest way to deal with that is you just lightly tap on it with a hammer. And that stuff will just chip, pop right off. We don't want to have any of that on there because it'll cause the, a vibration in the brakes, it'll cause vibration in the wheel. The angle I'm seeing, there's still a little bit right here. We just keep tapping on it until it's gone. Don't hit it really, really hard because you can damage the wheel bearing. There, we're good. Alright, and we'll put some of that the, uh, fluid film on it. cover all the areas that the rotor will come in contact with. It'll help preventing it from getting locked back on there again. Might not prevent it, but it'll help. All right. Now, because these lug nuts are like an inch and a half long, and our lug nuts are probably three quarters of an inch, half an inch deep tops, there's no way I can bottom these out and hold the rotor on, so I grabbed an old axle nut. We'll use that to hold the rotor in place while we do the rest. Yeah, sorry about getting in your way there. Get this rotor opened up. Before we peel it out of the bag, we're going to make sure it's the same thing. And ironically, the inner lip of this or outer lip of this rotor is thick, just like on that one. So maybe they're not junk, maybe that's an intended design. Or maybe it's the same piece of junk. I don't know. You guys let me know. If there's supposed to be a difference in the thickness, let me know. If there isn't, we need to let Advance know. Now just double check, make sure the diameters are the same. All right, yep, we got it. We got the same ones, good. And just another little note too, while you're doing this and checking rotors, and I've accidentally done the same thing. Make sure you got five lugs instead of four, or vice versa. Go ahead and remove that from the bag. This has a machining oil on it, so we're gonna need brake cleaner to clean this up. We'll move some stuff out of the way here. Spray that down. All right, blue paper towels. What I like to do, just to be not so wasteful, take the paper towel, fold it into four. Take the brake, brake cleaner, and keep in mind that this will disintegrate because of the brake cleaner after a short period of time. But wet, the, wet it down really good. Starting to drip. Now use this to wipe down your rotor. And don't worry about all the fuzz that you leave all over the rotor. Be careful also to not cut yourself. You get all of that machining oil off of there. Then you can go ahead, put the rotor on. Of 
before I push it all the way back, I'm going to clean it off a little bit more. I got grease all over it. Not that it matters, but got to make it look good, you know. Wipe all of this excess crap off of here. And then slide it back. Take the large wheel nut. Shut it in there. That'll secure the rotor so you don't have to fight with it when you're putting on the brakes. Now, let's get to the caliper bracket. Nice, rusty bracket. And uh, that nice blue file is not going to fit in here. So this is going to be a little bit of a project. I'm going to have to do this with what's called a bastard file. And that's going to take a little while. And this is a bastard file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said bastard. Yes, I did. But that's because it's the name of the file. And let's get in here and get as much of that rust off of there as you can. This landing right here is the landing that the pressure is applied to. So we want to make sure that this is exceptionally smooth and clean. But we want to make sure that the sides right in here. And here are also clean because they're going to pinch down on the brake pads with the hardware and lock the pads in place. So we need to make sure, and you guys that do the brake specialties and everything else, pay attention if you don't already know this. Clean these surfaces off in here, otherwise you're going to have problems really fast with your brakes. So these brake specialists that are pumping out brakes like there's no tomorrow and three months later they don't work right, that's the reason why. So when you bring it back to them, you tell them make sure to caliper bracket. The grooves in the caliper bracket are clean. Also, when you're using the file, to, you know, keep your vial good for a long time. Don't put any pressure on it while you're pulling backwards. Only put the pressure on it while you're cutting forward. And just continue to do this until the majority of your surface down here is clean and rust free. Don't worry about grinding it down to the point of pitch because you don't want to remove metal, you just want to remove the oxidization. Well, it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world unless, well, I'll stop picking on Eric sooner or later, but if you got a sandblaster, you can make it look nice and pretty, but if you don't have a sandblaster, it takes some labor. All right, now that we got those cleaned up, I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on here, and then put the hardware clips in. But before I do that, I'm gonna pop these pins out. Remember, take the boot off the pin first. See all that rust? Wow, yuck. Same thing on the other side, pull the boot down. A little bit of rust. But the rest of the pin is kind of clean. We're going to do one at a time so we don't mix them up. We'll do the nastiest one first. And this is probably going to be in the chuck of the drill. So we'll spin it, get it nice and uniformly clean. That's a little brake cleaner first. Yeah, the bottom of that pin looks pretty good. It's only up around the head of the pin. It's particularly nasty. So we'll take this and set this right into the chuck of the drill. With the three little slots, line right up with the chuck. And give it a snug. Just gonna make sure it's smooth. Get the pin cleaned up like that. Then we can go ahead and put some grease on it, put that back in. Give this a nice little clean out. Put 
work it around in there a little bit. And slide it in and out. Twist it around. Make sure there's no spots where it's hanging up in there. Be careful you don't pull your boot back out with it. I'll let the brake cleaner of the tin there help dissolve everything. Work it around. Not getting a little windy. We're about to get some rain, I think. It's one of the things that really breaks up doing this stuff. Good old rain. So make sure you subscribe. Help me get a good good amount of subscribers. Someday maybe I can afford a garage. Alright. It's kind of gross. And go ahead and pull that back out. And give it a little rinse. Let's sit there and air dry for a moment. We'll take the pen, a little bit of grease on it. And a little grease underneath the tip. And go ahead and insert this. Move it around, spin, and just rotate this so your little globs of grease go inside the boot. Get all the way up to the top, there's still some grease up here, you can work it down. Right, see how the grease is getting up around the top right here? Work the rest of the way in, and now that grease is going to go all the way around. It's going to provide a really nice seal on that boot. And we're going to do the same thing now on this other side. Pull the boot out. Take the pin. Wipe the pin down. This one here's got the rubber on it. It's one of the reasons why I'm starting to like doing these one at a time. Just so I don't accidentally mix these up because sometimes really trying to understand the rules as to where these are located can be kind of tricky. But in this particular case, this would be the trailing edge. The trailing side is the side. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it goes this way. So this would be the trailing edge. So they're putting this in the trailing edge on this side. On the other side, might even be on the top. I don't know. We'll find out when we get there, but that pin's all nice and clean. I'm not going to worry. Well, I'll wire brush this top part. Clean that up. And then clean this out here. Spray some of this in here. Right now, just let it soak. Screwdriver is just a hair bit too big to fit all the way down in there. I'm not going to force it to get it stuck. Which I don't know if you guys can even see me right now. Yeah, barely. bumps or anything inside nice and smooth. I can hear the machine marks inside of it. Rinse again. Get 
down inside nice and clean. Go ahead and grease that pin. Oops, I'm going to wire brush it first. Well, where'd the wire brush go here? I'm taking a drill, I'm anchoring it against my leg for stability, my hands on the other side for stability, I got a firm grip, I can rotate it on this. And then when you're done, that's what your pin looks like. So we'll go ahead and grease this, put this in. Blob on the end. Got in there. Again, rotate it as you're going in. around the outside put that right there just keep rotating and push it a little further and now we got a little bit of a vacuum seal because of that rubber piece got nice movement in it now now don't worry about getting a little bit of the silicone grease on here because it'll actually help keep keep it from drying out. So we're all set to put this caliper back bracket back in place. So we're gonna put the hardware cl clips in, get this greased, and put that on. Now we're greasing the caliper. About a quarter inch glob of grease. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Flip it over, do the same thing. And I get down inside this groove and coat all the surfaces in there. Again, be careful because you're machining surfaces, you could have really sharp edges. Guy's probably tired of me talking about sharp edges. Probably want to see me get cut actually, but I'm gonna be trying to be careful not to let that happen. Get all that coated. The rust turns from purple to or from brown to purple when the, the grease gets into it. And then once they're all coated like that, you can go ahead and clean up the inside edge here so we don't get any on the rotor. Put the hardware clips in place. Remember, those were different. And open up the brakes. There's your hardware clips. And I'm not liking this because these. Oh, well, there we go. I'm looking for these little weird ends on them. So we got the right kind of, kind of hardware. Brake pads, all individually wrapped. Squealers are already on some of them. And wrap all four. And of course, they always give you a little package of grease. I always have my own. But in case you guys don't have your own, Good, good quality stuff, they'll usually give you these or they'll at least offer to sell them to you at the counter. If you don't have any at home, pick up a package. You'll need these in various locations. Now the brake pads. 
let's see what we got here. So all four of them the same way. Alternate brake pads, it'll make them stack easier. Alright, all four brake pads are the same part numbers. All four brake pads are the same shape. They're all curved on the bottom. So it really doesn't matter whether these are inboard or outboard. Squealers go on the leading edge. Outboard, inboard. Well, this is one side, that's the other side. Set those over there. Get the hardware clips out. Get one of this dial. And one with a silly little spring on it. Now what's tricky about these is these little ears right here, when you put your brake pad in, your brake pad is going to sit inside this like this here and then lock into your groove. And this is going to help bring the brake pad back out so it doesn't drag. So this is the top one. As you take off, put on down here. Oh. The rotor bracket sits this way. This one here is going to go up in the top. Make sure your hardware sits all the way down in. If it doesn't, a little bit of a bend in this one, but if it doesn't sit down there, it means there's probably still too much metal left on your caliper bracket. You know, or, or rust scaling, I should say. But I'm pretty thorough with getting this rust off of here, so. Push those right down in. Flip it over, put the other new one in the top. Sometimes these don't fit so easily, but. Make sure they're pushed in all the way down. So these edges right here, all the way down as far as they can go. Top and bottom. And then we can go ahead and bolt the bracket back on. Hopefully the wind isn't making too much noise on the camera. I changed the setting and hopefully that is gonna work well. And go ahead and tighten down that bracket bolt. to the two wrench method so that we can get this nice and tight. Go to the parts store later on and get myself a new breaker bar. I don't think I could find a Craftsman breaker bar anywhere, but this half inch drive, Craftsman, it's the first time I've ever broke one this way. I've snapped the jaw here, I've snapped the bolt in the middle, but I've never broken off the tip. Kind of ironic, but 442-202, could probably just get a new piece, but we'll figure that out. If, if I can get another new piece for it, I'll have two breaker bars. Take the new pad and this is kind of difficult. One of these days I'm going to learn how to do this not on the car. Okay, the little clip is inside the ear and the new one, again, the little clip inside the ear and then just roll it into place. Now if your brake pads, when you put them in, like the top here is moving nice and easy. This one here is moving fairly easy. Try that again. 
but the bottom, it's, it's, it's still sticking on the bottom. So the appropriate thing to do is to take this back out and clean that up some more until this doesn't get stiff or stuck in there. So I'm going to break this back down. I will come back to you guys as soon as I've gotten back to this stage. supposed to be if I see I let go and these pop back out now they're free enough to move take the caliper back off the hook maybe and the hook take the caliper over here and set it whoops can't do that I need to push the piston back first Set that there. Put my C clamp back here. Just to hold them so they don't pop back out on me. That's a problem because now I need the clamp. Alright, take. I'm going to have to do this over again. Take the brake pads back out. Yes, well, they got no way to hold in them. So now we're going to take the piston, clean all of this yuck up. silicone all over the place in here. Silicone sealer. And all of it's up the piston. We gotta get sprayed out with brake cleaner. Lots and lots and lots of silicone on this. Surface of the piston. It's going to be a little tricky because these brake pads are going to want to pop back out on me again. So, again, inboard on the clip. 
rotate it in on the clip rotate it in see how easy those went in that's the way they're supposed to go now the tricky part is, is getting this down here make sure you're not twisting your hose around like I'm doing right now there you go piston roll up I did it again I forgot to push the piston back in okay so using pop right back up using the uh, C press and an old brake pad set the old brake pad in front of it oh yeah you don't have to go quite as deep with your clamp square and slowly push your piston back in watch carefully to make sure the boot on your piston isn't ballooning out anywhere it's all going down and in smooth and uniformly because if you bottom this out and there's a bubble you'll pinch it and it'll put a hole in it water will get in and your piston will no longer go back and forth as easy as this one just did there you have it Pistons pushed all the way back in. Now we can put it down here, but I gotta put the brake pads back in the little clips. And they have to be rotated, rolled in. Otherwise, they won't go back in. On the little tab, try that clip, roll it in. There we go, roll it in. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Take your caliper, slide it over, and in place like this. You might have to push your pin bolts back in a little bit. And go ahead and put your caliper bolts in. Clean up everything. I'm give it another little rinse down just to play it safe. We've already wiped them off, so we don't have to worry about doing that again. Get all the nasty yuck out of here so they look nice and pretty. straighten your wheel back out you take off the lug nut now and you go ahead and put the wheel back on make enough room here to do that right, we'll get that rotor out of there If I was doing just the brakes, I'd be putting the wheel back on, but I still have that sway bar link. Get this down out of the way. I still have this sway bar link here to contend with. And it's gonna be fun because I don't have a breaker bar anymore. Alrighty, well, this disaster that was in here. And the bottom one was blown out. Top one, I had to cut it off and wrench it. The bottom one, yeah, there goes the ball from it. I had to cut that off. But we managed to get it out, get the new one in. So we're all done right here. Now all we gotta do is just put the wheel back on and we are done with these brakes. So let's get that wheel back on. Get that pet pad out of here. All of the rust. Now 
Nice and neat, no mess left behind. Oh yeah, I forgot. Got one little detail. Let's set that right there for now. Stay right there. Set this back down for a second. I guess we gotta put this piece back in. And we're missing the thumbtacks for this. So I went out and bought some new ones. Plus, we're going to make a hole right here and right here so that we can zip tie these because, well, let's see. These silly little things, these right here, it's just a little push rivet, goes in the hole, this pushes in, spreads these out, and it locks it in place. Two of them, four dollars. Zip ties were a lot cheaper, so we're only gonna use these two on the top, and then down here we're gonna zip tie, so I gotta make the two holes for the zip ties. So let's get this in place. That sits back here. Right here, just like this. Got one spot right there, and in. And I've got one more to go right there. Well, you guys probably can't see that from here, but we'll pick you up and get you over here. Yeah, that right there, this hole, this right here goes right in and then locks. And that won't pop back out. So now we got to go one more right here and then zip tie, zip tie, and then put the wheel back on. Seems like everything's buried in the bottom of my toolbox, including my diagonal cutters. Get that one replaced, that one put back in, that one replaced. And get the zip tie, zip tie. Let's get up here and trim these off. Maybe trim these off. There we go. And put the wheel back on. Well, now that it's good and dark out here, and I've been cutting stuff off and fighting with stuff. I'm just gonna get this wheel back on, close up this video. And we'll go ahead, let the jack down, close it up with that. So if you guys find this helpful, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Again, I really appreciate the subscriptions. Have a good night, and don't forget, now you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches.